Hi, I'm Holly McLean with Train Lee TV, and today we are going to be talking about the motor block of an LGB locomotives and all the different things that are inside of one of these motor blocks and what routine maintenance that you can be doing to them, such as uh, changing the shoes uh, and changing the tires, the wheels, things like that, and lubricating them. And with me, as many of you probably already know, is we have Christy McNary, head of our technical department. And Christine, why don't we go ahead and start um, talking about these motor blocks. And one of the things that's also really handy is to make sure that you have one of the Trainly uh, toolkits because this uh, pretty much is most of the tools you'll you'll need to do any type of work on the majority of the LGB yeah. equipment. Yeah. So that's a nice kit. And then our little uh, lubricator uh, applicator. We also, I brought in some graphite lubricant and I also have some engine or gear grease. Okay. And it's important to use these specific types of lubricants because a lot of the other ones that are out on the market that you might get at a Home Depot or something like that can actually dissolve and damage the plastic. So yes. it's very important to make sure you use these specific types of lubricants to make sure then your uh, LGB equipment can uh, run for, for years and years and years. years, and years. And years. Um, LGB has used the same types of grease and lubricants uh, for their locomotives as long as they've been running. So Christine, we have uh, two motor blocks here, two different types, uh, a newer, newer style and an older style, and you're going to walk us through on how to do the, the servicing on these. Mm -hmm. Now the older style is going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, in that you have to take it completely apart. The first thing you need to notice is there are some screws just hidden behind the wheels. So you need to take the wheels off to start with, and they just screw off from um, some little screws that hold the wheels on. You also have to pry the wheel off a little bit from the axle. And what we've always said is it's nice if you have a, a lighter surface to be working on so you can see the little parts. Um, additional lighting is helpful. And even sometimes a uh, little jeweler's apron because when you pop these off, there's little springs and brushes inside that like to go uh, flying. Go flying. So. And you'll see that here real quick. There there's the, these, uh, this is one of the brushes. This is the old style brush. And I'm going to talk briefly about the brushes versus a new style sealed brush. Now what's really nice about these when you actually have it completely pulled apart is that the brushes are actually interchangeable because they use the same size. The only problem is you have to remove the little metal um, collar or sleeve for the old style brush. And again, see the little brush went flying. <laughs> Are the old styles still available? Yes. Okay. We do have them. Yeah, I remember I've, I've lost many of these springs and brushes over the years of <laughs> doing this. We also sell the springs by themselves if you need those. <coughs> now, once you get that apart, you see how that the whole motor block just came apart in half. Now, this is the older style wheel. It is a screw on type wheel. Um, the wheels are becoming more and more difficult to obtain, the screw-on ones. Um, and then the um, axles, we can get the axles with or without the gears on them. Um, and we can also get the gears by themselves. Now in this motor block, I'm all, I also have one of the older style motors. And if you notice, and people ask about this, a lot of times people will ask is about the indexing collar on the motors. What the indexing collar is, is this is just a little collar that fits on the, on the motor. 
Okay, this indexing color allows you to index the motor in the correct orientation based off of the polarity. It also helps prevent the motor from spinning when it's in the motor block. Mm -hmm. um, new motors come with those. They look a little different. The new indexing collars look like that. Now often when we send out a new motor, it'll have include that indexing collar and it actually only fits on the motor one direction. The other question that is often asked is you can't really tell on the new motors which is positive and negative. Your indexing collar helps with that and also on the motor itself there is a little tiny plus sign indicating the positive. So the next motor block we want to talk about is the more contemporary one. So when you have your motor block out and you've changed your motor, it's also a very good time to take a look at your gears and wheels, pick up shoes, and anything else like the brushes also. As you saw with the other motor block, you need to um, uh, take that one completely apart, and it's kind of a pain to work on that. These are a little easier. In this case, to get to the bottom or the gears and the wheels, you need to remove the bottom plate, remove the, the various screws that are holding it there. And just sort of pulls off. Once you have it removed, you have your wheels, and the wheels literally just pull out like that. Um, you can access and clean the grease off the um, gears, check them, and replace them or the wheels. The important part is to make sure that you have all of your little contacts um, uh, connecting between the, uh, each of the uh, brushes and the pickup shoes to change one of your uh, brushes out. You literally have to move the wheel out of the way. In this case, and you have to take the, um, to get to the wheel, you have to take the side rods off on this one. Which we can also talk about another important issue when you have it all apart. So to do, replace the wheel, it's quite literally that simple. The brushes just pull out. If the brush is very short, like that, you'll want to replace it. But if it looks something like that, it should be fine. It may need a little cleaning. The shoes are usually pretty simple to change out, like this one. They just sort of sit into the, uh, the spots and um, make contact with this little uh, electro, little metal plate. Um, sometimes the shoes get stuck. And unfortunately, when they do get stuck, you have to essentially destroy the shoe pulling it out using a pair of pliers or something like that. Um, the next part, when you have it all torn apart and you're getting ready to put it back together, especially with a, a steam locomotive like this one, there's another funny term that people talk about called quartering. And what that actually means is that each side of the wheel, I'll show you, is a quarter turn off from the other side. And then your front wheels and your rear, um, rear wheels, or all the wheels in between, need to have that same alignment. And what, what's important about quartering and the easy way to do it is use one wheel and connect your side rods. Note this one is actually, well, it's actually pretty good. 
but if it was out of out of the location or incorrectly quartered you cannot connect your side rods so you want to make sure and rotate it so that you can connect your side rods correctly make sure there's a little bit of space in there and make sure you have all of your little pins connected correctly or electrical contacts and that's the in a nutshell that's the basic and then it's just putting it all back together now that you've gone through and we've done the brushes and the shoes and and so forth and ready to put back together i imagine one of the final things would be go ahead and put a little bit of a grease on the on the gears and the gear the motor block yeah now I like to when I'm I have this apart I usually clean the grease off a little bit um, try to make it nice and clean and you don't need a lot of grease on these and just a actually that's even probably too much I like to kind of spread it around on the gear a little bit and where I really like to have the grease and then maybe even rotate the whole thing so it's connecting with your the um, worm gear on the motor and kind of spreading that grease around inside there a little bit. Um, you can use either graphite or, or the grease. Again, the grease is specially designed so it doesn't eat the plastic and damage it. Um, if you notice, these are an, a nylon based gear and the gears on the um, motor are brass gear. You really don't want to run brass and brass gears because they'll, they'll, if they don't have enough lubrication on them, they will eat each other and cause more damage. The nylon gears are also designed so that if you start stressing the gears out, they will damage the gear and not the whole motor and everything else. Yep. So. Good. So then we just put that back together and yeah. Make sure all the pieces are in the right spots. <laughs> <laughs> Generally not a good idea to have extra pieces left over when doing this. Oops. And this, um, usually if everything is all set properly, everything will just sort of fit back together. Also, another important tip when working on any of these if you have to force something off, mm -hmm. there's something wrong. Um, and you need to reevaluate if, if you've missed a screw or if there's something causing it to stick. So. Yep, not a lot of excessive force needed to take these apart or put it together, no. back together. Excellent. Well, I'm Holly McLean, and this is Christine McNary, and thanks again for watching Trainly Tech TV, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>